Thank you, Madam Chair. Good morning, Council Members. This is agenda item J1, consideration to schedule emergency action for changes to the 2014-15 Pacific Sardine Fishery. <clears throat> um, so let me start by um, commending everyone who has in, been involved in uh, trying to get supplemental materials and information on the table um, for your consideration in making this decision. <clears throat> um, given that there was a uh, extra work thrown around to some of the advisory bodies, especially the management team. There may be some typos or some, uh, you know, sort of lingering uh, holes that still need to be filled in. We apologize in advance uh, if you if you see some uh, mistakes that may be in there, but please bring them to our attention if need be. You'll also notice that um, some of the figures that are in both the situation summary and some of the supplemental materials are kind of moving targets. So you might be, see some discrepancy about, you know, whether there's 2,900 metric tons left or 27 or 34 or whatever. That's just the nature of the business. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, again, today you'll be determining whether there's uh, an emergency situation that would warrant uh, 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 taking action, and then, you, as Dr. McIsaac said, you would schedule something later in the meeting. Um, uh, by scheduling it a couple of days later, that would allow us to put out a notice um, to interested parties. Uh, there's some guidance in the in the federal and our standard up or our uh, our SOPPs um, on uh, on reaching out to the media and affected parties. So we would be doing that. <clears throat> There is a, there's an attachment one to this agenda item that gives some of the background and guidance, both from uh, the council's operating procedures and SOPPs and federal guidance. And I think it's worth um, um, walking through that very briefly just to sort of set the stage here. Um, so this is agenda item J1, supplemental attachment one. It's the procedural considerations for emergency council action for changes to the 2014-15 sardines fishery. So, <clears throat> so under uh, Council of Operating Procedure 1, it gives a lot of guidance on emergency meetings. We're not scheduling an emergency meeting here. We're taking emergency action during an existing meeting. Um, and uh, it basically talks about uh, the vote. You, you do have to take a vote, and you have to just be careful about documenting it and putting the motion up in writing. That, that would be um, for later in the week. Standard operating, or the, sorry, the Statement of Organization Practices and Procedures, also a council document, <clears throat> gives some guidance on uh, making a motion on an emergency. Um, it talks about uh, um, public notice and notifying National Marine Fisheries Service Headquarters in Washington, D., that sort of thing. Um, and then there's uh, federal regulatory guidance. That would be that would fall to NIMS, but certainly it's something that should guide the council in its in its decision. Um, there are three emergency criteria that you've already seen um, discussed in public comment and and during agenda items uh, during the uh, open comment uh, B1 agenda item, and um, and it, it basically defines an emergency. It says an emergency exists if if there are. are uh, three criteria. One is that it, re it results from recent unforeseen events or recently discovered circumstances, and it presents a serious conservation or management problem in the fishery, and can be addressed through emergency regulations for which the immediate benefits outweigh the values, the value of advanced public notice, public comment, and deliberative consideration of the impacts on participants to the same extent as would be expected under the normal rulemaking process. So you have to feel confident that taking emergency action and foregoing that advanced public notice is, is justified. <clears throat> and then there's a justification, um, and there are uh, four items under the, um, the, the justification that, that would have to be um, uh, addressed. One is ecological, uh, to prevent overfishing or to prevent other serious damage to the fishery, resource, or habitat. Or it could be economic justification to prevent significant direct economic loss or to preserve an economic opportunity. Uh, it could be social justification to prevent significant community impacts or conflicts between user groups. Or it could be a public health justification, which um, probably doesn't fit in this situation. <clears throat> And then finally, there's some excerpts, which we also talked about yesterday from the CPS FMP about incidental catch. This is something that 
should the council decide to schedule something uh, in a couple of days and take action um, uh, to close the fishery, uh, again, you'd have to discuss uh, what sort of incidental uh, allowance provisions um, would be included in that action. So that's the supplemental attachment uh, one to this agenda item. <clears throat> Moving back to the um, overview, um, there is, um, sorry, I'm going to go back to the, uh, such, there's a supplemental attachment two also that I want to reference that is, on one side it has the graph, it's uh, entitled, example, 150 time year trajectory for three harvest control rule variants, and then on the other side is, uh, is a table showing HCR variants evaluated as the base case. And we put that in because um, uh, we wanted to remind everybody that we very recently did um, essentially a management strategy evaluation, looked at the long-term modeling, ecological um, interactions um, that affect the sardine population and the dynamics. Um, you took action on this recently, and if you look at the graph on page one of that, you see that, that, that this is the population that shows very large swings in population from way, way up to way, way down. Um, it's difficult uh, to predict what's going to happen in any particular year, um, and it's difficult to predict, um, uh, you know, to, to project out uh, in, you know, in a, in a short term, you know, one or two or five year time frame. But you can be confident that over the long term, you will, you will see major changes and swings in the population. So that's attachment two to this agenda item. Um, again, your action is to consider scheduling emergency action to consider changes to the 2014-15 sardine fishery. I went through your supplemental attachments. You also have supplemental reports from the CPSMT, the CPSAS, the SSC, um, and there's public comment as well. So um, after the overview, we'll have reports and comments from the advisory bodies and management entities and public comment, and then you'll move on to council action to schedule uh, a decision on, on this later in the, in, the, uh, in the week. Thanks. Any questions on the attachments or, or the overview uh, for Carrie? Okay. Seeing none, let's start with the SSC. Good morning, Madam Chair and Council Members. I will be reading from Agenda Item J1A, the Supplemental SSC Report. The Scientific and Statistical Committee discussed the status determination criteria adopted to define overfishing, approaching overfishing, overfished, and approaching overfished for the Pacific sardine stock within the CPS FMP. The SSC reviewed each definition in sections 4.3 and 4.4 of the CPS FMP, considered each in the context of the adopted reference points and the best available science and scientific information, and prepared Table 1 to address each determination. With respect to the definition of overfishing, the existing National Standard 1 guidelines state that each FMP must describe which of two possible methods will be used to determine an overfishing status. The two alternatives available for determining overfishing are, number one, fishing mortality rate exceeds the maximum fishing mortality threshold, and two, the catch exceeds the OFL. In operational terms, the CPS FMP uses method two, such that overfishing is defined as occurring when catch exceeds the adopted OFL. Thus, by definition of overfishing in the NS1 guidelines, overfishing is not occurring, currently occurring for Pacific sardine as the 2014-15 catch of 18,930 five metric tons, which that estimate was provided by the CPSMT, has not exceeded the adopted 2014-15 OFL of, of 39,210 metric tons. Had the errors in the 2014 assessment been addressed in early 2014 and an OFL adopted based on the revised model, 
the, record, the recommended OFL would have likely been 29,256 metric tons. The SSC does not find this alternative OFL calculation to be appropriate to apply in order to address the question of whether overfishing is currently taking place. The SSC does not recalculate OFLs for any FMP species based on new assessment updates or information since the consequences of midstream recalculation of previously adopted OFLs would disrupt the process. However, this does not um, preclude taking action to reduce catches in situations in which updated information has been made available to the Council. The SSC evaluated the question of whether the Pacific sardine stock is approaching overfishing by referencing Section 4.3 in the CPS FMP, which reads, Overfishing is approached whenever projections indicate that fishing mortality or exploitation rates will exceed the OFL level within two years. The SSC notes that the term approaching overfishing, as defined in the CPS FMP, is not clearly defined and should be revisited. The SSC's calculation of the current exploitation rate is based on the best available estimate of the current 2014-15 sardine catch, and the best available science regarding the status of the stock. This, this provides an estimated exploitation rate for the 2014-15 fishing year to date of 12.6%. The adopted target exploitation rate for the 2014-15 fishing season based on the application of the 2014 harvest control rule was 12.2%. Consequently, the stock is approaching overfishing in the 2014-15 fishing season. Final estimation of exploitation rates will depend on a number of additional factors, including catches in the U.S. waters during the remainder of the fishing year, catches of the northern sardine population caught in Mexico, and the fraction of observed U.S. catches that are estimated to represent fish from the southern population caught in the U.S. The current U.S. catches represent the best estimate for the total U.S. plus Mexico catch for the northern subpopulation, given the stock assessment team's description of the current temperature regime. With respect to the question of whether the stock is overfished, the SSC finds that the current biomass estimated by the 2015 update assessment of 96,688 metric tons is greater than the adopted minimum stock size threshold for this stock. Therefore, the stock is not overfished. With respect to the question of whether the stock is approaching an overfish condition, the SSC reiterates the stock assessment finding that the total stock biomass of Pacific sardine is declining as a result of poor recruitment. The best available stock projection at this time is from the 2015 update assessment. If poor recruitment conditions persist, it is plausible that the stock could reach an overfish condition within two years. The SSC briefly proposed the projections of sardine recruitment presented on slide 14 of the supplemental PowerPoint attachment from Oceana, agenda item B1B, supplemental open public comment 10. The SSC observes that these projections are not included in the stock assessment or the Stock Assessment Review Panel Report, and the SSC was not provided with their scientific basis. And then we've put a table here that you can see, and I do want to make one correction in that table. Um, the line over, uh, approaching overfishing, that 2014-15, the first E MSY of 12.6%, that should just be E, not MSY. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Misha. Mm -hmm. uh, questions? David Crabb. Thanks, Madam Chair. Thanks, Misha. I was just looking in the, um, I guess it's the second to last paragraph on page two. Um, it basically said that um, poor recruitment conditions persist. It is possible that the stock could reach an overfish condition within two years. It, it basically speak to the cause as being poor recruitment. It didn't say anything about fishing. So how does fishing tie into that statement or does it? Well, you know, um, 
As, as Kevin showed, actually, that, and he, he showed a slide yesterday that showed if you remove fishing, how the trend is still the same. And so even, that to me seems like even with no fishing, that's still a sign of poor recruitment of the decline. Um, so does that help answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Other questions for Misha? Michelle? Thanks, Madam Chair. Uh, Misha, so I appreciate the, the SSC's review and, uh, and discussion that they had on this topic and the, the definition of the different terms and, and the application of the terms. And so I understand using the uh, the fact that the council has has adopted an OFL of the 39,210 metric tons and that based on our best estimate of catches to date that we have not exceeded that adopted OFL and therefore the determination that overfishing is not occurring. Mm -hmm. If we were to consider overfishing in the sense of are we fishing at an exploitation rate above FMSY, would the answer to that be yes? Mm. I, we are, we are, I believe, I don't have the number, uh, yes. Um, but that is not how we determine the definition of overfishing. I understand, but so are we, but are we fishing at a higher exploitation rate than what would be sustainable over time to achieve MSY? I believe so. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Chris? Thank you. Um, related question, because I've been trying to keep in my head the difference between correcting the error in last year's model versus what's come to be called the back calculated number this week. And so the question is the, the 150,000 metric tons that's referenced in, I believe, in the calculation of the current best calculation or the, well, the calculation you just referenced um, for, for the current fishing rate is based on that 150, correct? as opposed to what I understand the corrected, if we'd have found the error last year and taken care of it then, it would have been more like 275. Is that we're based, accurate? We're basing it more on the 275. What, 150? Well, um, so the, the last paragraph on page one, mm -hmm. um, best available science regarding the status of the stock, 2014 mm -hmm. age one plus biomass is okay. 150. This provides an estimated exploitation rate of 12.6 percent. So I'm, uh, I'm gathering that that was the denominator oh, in the calculation. Yes, yes sorry. It leads um, to 12.6. Whereas if you did use the 275, the, that's in the, I'm, I'm leaping ahead here. It's in the management team report. You'd okay. actually get a different number because the denominator would be larger. Right. Okay. Thank you. I just want to make sure I'm looking at the right numbers. Dr. McIsaac. Thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, also let me compliment the SSC on scrambling around on the afternoon of their last day to take up a new topic and a very nice statement. Um, if uh, some of the council members are wondering the biological value of uh, the remaining fish that are available in the fishery uh, in terms of uh, sardine stock productivity through the years. This attachment one shows a 150 year time trajectory. Uh, do you believe it's the opinion of the SSC that that uh, graph is a, a good way to think about that question or is there a, a different way that might be better? Well, the SSC did not discuss this um, in that way. However, I will say that these, 
this graph in attachment two, the results of this MSC were by no means developed to predict short term anything in the short term. This was to make relative comparisons of performance measures of harvest control rules over a long period of time. So this would not be the appropriate thing to look at. This is totally looking at performance of harvest control rules, not on the productivity of the stock. And I mean, we know that if you fish harder and for longer, it would take a stock longer likely to rebuild, but this is not the appropriate graph to look at in those terms. Dr. McIsaac. And uh, should the council elect to take up J2 in a couple of days, did the SSC, uh, do you think the SSC has a feeling for what a better way to take a look at this might be? We did not discuss it, so I, I couldn't speak to that for the SSC. Anything else for Misha? Frank? Um, I uh, was interested maybe just a little bit more um, explanation, uh, and you, it might have been part of your answer to another question that I missed, but um, the uh, uh, in the bottom of page one, that last paragraph talking about how you uh, get to the idea that it's approaching overfishing, and this um, uh, the, the sentence is towards the bottom that says the adopted target exploitation rate was 12.2 percent and then the, the uh, estimated exploitation rate was 12.6. That, that is the sole basis of your concluding that it's approaching overfishing and, and is that supported in the FMP? Yes. Or, okay. Oh, yeah. sorry. Finish. No, I, finish. I, I, guess it, well, I guess that was it actually. Yeah, is okay. It? So that is what we looked at to um, by definition, um, I would like to point out that we have a, first of all, approaching overfishing is not really a term in the MSA. This is a CPS FMP kind of um, definition. Um, the 12.6%, as you see, we have, a, I have a, we have a question mark by the yes, and that is because we still don't know the catch. And we don't know the uncertainty around that number. So we don't actually know if it's exactly greater than or not So uh, um, because of the uncertainty. And also that 12.2%, from my understanding, is an average um, over three years. So it, it looks like it's approaching, but um, by definition, but we're not certain of that. Thank you. Any other questions? Thanks, Misha. Thanks. Okay, let's go to the management team. Good morning, uh, Madam Chair, Council Members. Um, I'm Lorna Wargo, Chair of the CPS Management Team. And to provide the team's report on the emergency um, action for changes to the 2014-15 Pacific Sardine Fishery. Um, and because of the short time frame, as Carrie referenced, that we had to compile and then um, develop this report. I'll be um, adding some numbers as I go through or making some changes to the text, as you see, um, in hopes that it would help the council better understand some of the information in the report. So the 2014 sardine stock assessment estimated 369,506 metric tons of biomass were available on July 1, 2014. The 2015 stock assessment review revealed this to be an error and that 2,075,705 metric tons should have been put forth as the 2014 biomass estimate. For this informational report, the Coastal Project Species Management Team examines harvest parameters based on the corrected 
2014 biomass estimate only to provide context for evaluation of potential emergency action. Table 1 below shows the existing adopted levels for the current season, as well as the corrected biomass of 275,705 metric tons and its corresponding harvest control rules. The difference between the acceptable biological catch, or ABC, for the corrected biomass of 26 1,706 metric tons and landings is 7,771 metric tons. This amount includes the remaining tribal set aside of approximately 950 metric tons, the remaining incidental allowance of 500 metric tons, the remaining directed fishery landings of approximately 2,900 metric tons, and harvest by the live bait fishery. End season harvest estimates for the California live bait fishery are not available but annual estimates from voluntary logbook data during 2008 through 2013 ranged between 1,849 metric tons and 2,979 metric tons with a mean of 2,403 metric tons. In total, landings are expected to be, to be about 1,000. This is an average range represented by that 1,000 metric tons below the ABC at the end of the fishery year, which is June 30th, 2015. And similarly, landings are expected to be approximately three to 4,000 metric tons below the overfishing limit for the corrected biomass at the end of the fishery year. And so the total landings that were referenced here is 2,000, I'm sorry, 25,688 metric tons. That isn't in the statement, but that represents catch to date, the remaining tribal set aside of 900 metric tons, incidental at 500 metric tons, the average of the live bait fishery of 2,403 metric tons, and the remaining allocation in the directed fishery of 2,900 metric tons. Based on available information to date on landings by the directed fishery, the remaining allowable harvest is approximately 2,900 metric tons as of April 9th, with an estimated directed harvest as of April 9th, with ins including the catch, incidental catch rollover and release from the Quinault Indian Nation of 18,064 metric tons. The estimated direct harvest remaining as of April 9th is 2,900 metric tons. The projected total directed harvest for the 2014-15 fishery is 20,964 metric tons. And table, uh, the directed fishery landings by period and state are provided in table two. Current directed fishery activity. Currently, no directed fishing is occurring off Washington and California. Fishing is occurring off Oregon, which is unusual this time of year. Spotter planes detected sardines off the central Oregon coast in March. The number of vessels and processors has varied somewhat since fishing began on March 19th. Two to four vessels have fished at any one time, and two to four processors have been buying sardines. Since March 19th, vessels have landed sardines into Winchester Bay, Newport, and Charleston. Fish are being trucked for processing to Astoria and Westport, Washington. Sardines are trucked to Westport. Sardines trucked to Westport are accounted for on an Oregon fish ticket or dockside tally sheet. Currently, two boats are landing into Winchester Bay, Oregon, and two to three vessels are landing into Charleston, Oregon. Oregon directed fishery catch rates and projections. Information on Oregon landings during March 19th through 30th are obtained from fish tickets. Information on Oregon landings during March 31st through April 9th are primarily from dockside weight tallies and the hails from three vessels on April 9th. Landings in Oregon may have occurred since April 9th. The mean daily rate of landings into Oregon during March 19th through April 9th was 70 metric tons. At this rate, the remaining 2,900 metric tons would be taken in approximately 41 calendar days, which would be May 20th. During the March 19th through 30 period, landings were made on eight of the 12 calendar days. 
Information on the number of days fished during March 31st through April 9th is currently not available. The average amount landed per fishing day in March was 129 metric tons. At this rate, the remaining allocation may be taken in as little as 22 days or by May 1st. During March 31st through April 9th, the mean daily rate was lower at 50 metric tons per calendar day. At this rate, the remaining allocation may be taken in 58 days or by June 6th. Latent effort and Oregon permit transfer provisions. Oregon has 25 limited entry permits which are issued to a vessel. Permits are transferable up to two times per calendar year. Fees for a permit transfer plus non-resident fees for a commercial boat license, a commercial fishing license, and three crew total $1,140. Reportedly, some Washington seniors are ready to begin fishing if sardines show up off Washington and harvest opportunity remains. Some California seniors are awaiting the council's decision on this topic before heading to Oregon to fish. Other landed catch. The CPSMT expects that total period three incidental catch by CPS fisheries will fall within the allocation limit of 500 metric tons. For periods one and two, incidental catch by CPS fisheries was less than half this amount, 200 metric tons and about 111 metric tons respectively. For the period between a closure of the directed fishery in period three, if any, and June 30th, the 500 metric ton incidental set aside remains for the third fishing period. Approximately 950 metric tons remain in the tribal set aside. Agency management action capability. States have different regulatory and public notification processes and timeliness for implementing potential changes to management specifications. California. If the California Fish and Game Commission were to use California Fish and Game Code Section 240 to take emergency action to close the sardine fishery, the process will take at least 30 days. From the Code 240, section, subsection A, notwithstanding any other provisions of this code, the Commission, when promulgating regulations pursuant to any authority otherwise vested in it by this code, may, after at least one hearing, adopt emergency regulation or order of repeal pursuant to section 113461.1 of the government code if it makes either of the following findings. That the adoption of a regulation or order of repeal of a re regulation is necessary for the immediate conservation, preservation or protection of birds, mammals, reptiles or fish, including but not limited to any nests or eggs thereof. Oregon. Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife can take emergency action via temporary rule within a day if necessary to provide adequate opportunity for agency consideration and public notice. Implementing a fishery change can be operationally accomplished within five business days. Washington. The Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife can take emergency action if an immediate resource conservation need is identified. Specifically from the revised Code of Washington, if an agency for good cause finds that immediate adoption, amendment, or repeal of a rule is necessary for the preservation of the public health, safety, or general welfare, and that observing the time requirements of notice and opportunity to comment upon adoption of a permanent rule would be contrary to the public interest. An emergency rule adopted under this section takes effect upon filing with the code revisor unless a later date is specified in the order of adoption and may not remain in effect for longer than 120 days after filing. Using the emergency rule approach, the process can take minimally a day, depending largely on the code revisor schedule. Impacts on ex vessel revenue. Current Oregon sardine prices are considerably higher than in past years with processors paying 18 cents per pound ex vessel revenue. Normally prices about 11 to 12 cents per pound and each thousand metric tons is worth approximately 375 to $400,000 in ex vessel revenue. CPSMT provisions on overfish definitions. The CPSM FMP provides provisions related to an overfish condition are presented here. 
The SSC determined that the stock is not currently overfished and it is unknown if an overfished condition is being approached. Figure one below shows the historical stock biomass estimates from the 2015 stock assessment update in comparison to the cutoff at 150,000 metric tons and the sardine overfish definition at 50,000 metric tons. And I think I'll conclude at that point since the definitions are taken from the 4.4 um, and 4.6.21 and are probably repetitious of what the SSC just provided. Thanks, Lorna. Questions? Right. Um, going back to, uh, let's see, page two, um, at the mean, uh, the mean daily rate of landings in Oregon, um, since that's where the fishery is right now, it, it looks, um, there's a lot of variability there. Mm -hmm. And um, was there any um, discussion about what may be the most reasonable projection from now on out, or, or could you expand on that a little? Um, well, there wasn't a lot of um, discussion. I think it's difficult to figure out, you know, we're still in spring and weather can be quite variable. So I think that's some of what you see here in the various daily landings is just they're off the water when it's, you know, just bad weather. So it's a little different. If this were July, I'd say probably would go f at the higher level faster. Um, so I think weather is the big variable here. Um, I did do some additional calculations that might help um, council decision making and can offer those here that if you're looking at the 50,000, or I'm sorry, 50 metric tons um, and a maximum of about 31 days for rule action, um, you would leave about 1,300 metric tons uncaught. At the 70, it's just under 1,000, about 700. And then at the 129 metric tons, the fishery would actually close per the specifications before a month's time. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Rich? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Lauren, I wonder if, um, and maybe the states would have to contribute to this, uh, to the answer, but I wonder if you could uh, refresh my memory with respect to state actions to close fisheries. I mean, in a practical sense, does, does that entail uh, prohibiting active fishing within three miles plus landing uh, restrictions, or what, what does that actually mean when a state uh, closes a fishery in this context? In this context, um, it would mean that the state is prohibiting landing into the state. Um, and I know between Washington and Oregon, we have a different, Washington doesn't allow fishing within three miles by permanent rule. Um, so the emergency action would just close the federal waters and, or close landing into Washington. I believe likewise for Oregon, it would prohibit the landing of the fish into Oregon. Um, I'm not as clear on California how their rules are structured. Um, Thanks. Chris, do you have anything to add? Uh, sure, thanks. I was just clarifying with staff what our, what our regulations are. and um, So it would be a prohibition of landings as a directed um, in Oregon. So any sardine that did come in would come in as a part of a load of something else and be subject to the, the current 45% ratio limitation. Okay, okay so that had... Uh, Marcy, do you want to? Yeah, thank you, Madam Vice Chair. So I guess just to clarify, uh, for California, we would need to promulgate a brand new rule. It wouldn't be anything that would be automatic. So it would say what we would want it to say. So we would probably be prohibiting directed take, prohibiting take and landing in the directed sense. Okay. Dan? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, in the discussion of, of management agencies' capabilities, you addressed the states. Did you talk about what the uh, national marine fisheries might do under secretarial action? Briefly, um, and I would probably refer that question to NIMS. Um, 
for further clarification. Well, we might do that during discussion, yeah. but, but you talked about it. You just didn't report it here. Um, again, briefly, the majority of the statement was written while we were down here on G1. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Michelle? Thank you. Um, Lorna, the, um, the focus of the, the team statement seems to be relative to the, the ABC and the ACL and the amount remaining. And can you just uh, refresh my memory just on the uh, harvest guideline and why that is not reflected in the team statement? where the harvest guideline is and where catches are relative to the harvest guideline? Yes. Um, so recall last year um, we did not adopt a harvest guideline per the um, strict definition of the HG because that relied on the SIO temperature for the um, informing fraction. And so the um, control rule that the fishery is operating under is an ACL, and that was adopted to be able to take advantage of using the Cal Coffee temperature time series to inform fractions. So when you look at the ACL here in the table one, just substitute in your mind that's equivalent to an HG, um, but at the time the FMP specified using SIO. So, um, it would be appropriate to just think of that ACL as the HG and not confuse that with, say, the ACL we were talking about yesterday for going forward next year. <coughs> Michelle? Thanks. Um, I appreciate the, the reminder of this, the switching from the SIO to the Cal Coffee. And um, so in the... Um, in a statement that we had under G1B uh, supplemental SSC report, they indicated that based on the updated assessment, uh, if we had revised the HG uh, in, in 2014 for this season, the revised HG value would be uh, 16,405 metric tons. And yeah. so I'm trying to reconcile what what does that number mean relative to the numbers that are reflected here in the team statement? I think what the SSC used was the strict HG formula and used fraction at 15, and that wasn't what is guiding current year management. It would have been the ACL with fraction or the EMSY at the 12 point, I don't recall exactly, but I think that's where the difference is coming from. Okay, thanks. Dr. McKay, uh, uh, Dr. McKay, Thank you, Madam Chair, and uh, let me also express appreciation to you and the members of the CPS management team for scrambling around yesterday when this could have come up yesterday afternoon on, on the council floor. A follow-up to Mr. Lincoln's question. So uh, based on what you have in your report, is it accurate for the council members to think that if Washington and Oregon closed fishing inside three miles and landing in both of those states, that there would still be another 30 days or so when fishing outside three miles in those states and fishing inside three and landing inside and outside three in California and landing in California would still be open. Correct. California would still be open um, under that scenario. Chris? Thank you. Um, First thing I wanted to do, I was getting ready to echo um, the comments about thank you for all the hard work. I know it was a tight deadline. I appreciate it very much. And you may not have this handy, and if you don't, that's fine. But um, of the 18,000 metric ton number at the bottom of page one, um, 
in parentheses, we talk, you talk about the incidental catch rollover and relinquishment from the tribal fishery. Um, do you have a ballpark sense of how much of that was in aggregate? Um, it may be the same as asking you what the directed guideline was last year before the rollovers occurred. If you have that number handy, that would be easier, and that would be fine as well. So you're asking maybe if you just repeat that. I'll I'm correct. trying to get a sense of how much we changed the directed harvest as a result of adding in uh, primarily the, the tribal fish that didn't, oh, okay. that were relinquished, um, not so much the incidental. Yeah, the tribal release last, it occurred last fall, was 2,500 metric tons. Thank you. Michelle? Thanks. And so, Lorna, in the um, estimated directed harvest of the 18,064 metric tons, does that include all of the the harvest from all of the different fisheries that we discussed yesterday. So that includes all of the uh, directed harvest as well as all of the incidental and um, live bait fishery harvest. Yes, that includes all commercial and tribal landings through the beginning of April. Um, it would probably have to check with team members. I think it includes um, incidental to date as well. Um, so I think that's a comprehensive number of all catch tribal, non tribal. Michelle? Thanks. And then specifically, it also includes the two to 3,000 metric tons in the live bait fishery. No, it does not. So, any other questions? Thanks, Lorna. All right, thank you. Advisory subpanel. Good morning, Madam Chair and Council Members. I'm Diane Pleschner, Steele Co-Chair, and my associate uh, co-chair, Michael Gunuski, will be happy to read from agenda item J1A, Supplemental CPSAS Report. The Coastal Pelagic Species Advisory Subpanel heard the presentation and Council discussion regarding the request for emergency action to close the sardine fishery for the remainder of the 2014-15 fishery. The CPSAS requests the Council to consider the following points in, in your deliberations. Number one, the CPSAS is concerned about how this issue is being perceived. The issue before the Council is due to a revised stock assessment, not because overfishing is occurring. Two, if the biomass calculation error had been corrected last year, the revised overfishing limit would have been 29,256 metric tons. The acceptable biological catch would have been 26,706 metric tons. And unfortunately, we have an error, and I won't repeat the harvest guideline because that was a mistake. Uh, we were scrambling to get this paper together. So uh, before the revised overfishing limit and ABC are well above, or both the revised overfishing limit and ABC biological catch are well above the current year annual catch limit catch target of 23,293 metric tons. Whatever decision the council makes, it is essential to maintain the incidental sardine catch allowance in other CPS fisheries for the remainder of this period in order to keep CPS boats fishing and processors doors open. Based on current market conditions, if the council elects to close the directed fishery, there will be a resultant loss of 2,900 approximately metric tons of foregone catch. A closure would result in an estimated loss of 1,150,000 in X vessel value. Foregone processing and other related activities using a conservative 2.7 multiplier 
would result in a total economic loss of $3,105,000. And that concludes our statement. We'd be happy to answer questions. Mike? Thank you, Madam Chair. Council members, if you'll indulge me for a moment, I would just like to thank uh, the management team did a really good, excellent job of rallying together and helping us kind of work our way through this. Uh, they put an extraordinary effort in that, and I would just like to acknowledge that fact. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. And you guys put in a lot of effort, too. And so. I did owe that. Thank you, guys. <laughs> it's been a, a long couple days. Chris? Thank you. Um, and thank you, guys, for, for the work you put in. I know it has been a hard couple of days. Uh, I suspect this question for Mike, but either welcome to respond. Related to um, Dr. McIsaac's question earlier about catching federal waters versus state waters, um, currently, do um, you have a sense of ballpark, whether it's mostly in Oregon I'm looking for, mostly occurring in what we would consider federal waters or split or... Thank you, Madam Chair, uh, Mr. Kern. I think that most of it has been in federal water, but it sounds like the sardines are really moving around a lot. Okay. So it may be, I may be in error. Um, it's not a lot of good information coming out of there, and I've just got a few contacts that are feeding me tidbits, so to speak. So it's, it's not the best way to reach a conclusion, but from what I've heard, Sometimes the fish will be moving a little bit out, and they're real skitterish right now, um, which could be predators. It could be sometimes they get that way, we think, just before spawning. So I think most of it is outside, but I couldn't be sure of that. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'd, I'd like to add just a little piece to that. Uh, Madam Chair and Mr. Kern, um, in, in California right now, what we're seeing is mixed fish. So we're not targeting sardine. They're coming in incidentally to our mackerel. And, and uh, with regard to the, the concept that the California boats would go up and fish in Oregon, sardine don't maintain quality for a very long period of time. So the idea of catching in federal waters and and, and shipping them by boat all the way back into California is highly unlikely, okay. I would say. Thank you. Thank you. Mike? <clears throat> I'd like to put a caveat on that, if I may, Madam Chair and Mr. Kern. Um, from Coos Bay, it's not inconceivable they could go down to Crescent City and unload. And, and I just would like to, I don't think our operation would do it, but it's not inconceivable that somebody else might attempt to do that. So I just, I don't want to have a misperception out there. We said one thing and something else happens, and it is it is possible, if not probable. So, so um, and, and Madam Chair, one more thing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, playing tag team here. Um, I'm not aware of any boats that are traveling to Oregon to fish sardine. I do know that there are some boats that are going north because we're anticipating we may have a little squid fishery, and the squid fishery is open now. So, um, again, just okay. it's not not impossible, as Mike says, but I don't. I'm not aware of anyone who's doing it. Mike, <laughs> I think, uh, Madam Chair, that the biggest issue in that is that there isn't much in the way of unloading facilities down there that can handle very much fish. I think otherwise you would see a few more boats in the vicinity. Uh, I think our plant in Charleston is one of those facilities, but you have to have a dock pump and be set up a little bit differently than normal. Winchester Bay is really a, a little spot, and it can only accommodate like two vessels a day, I believe. So there is restriction from the unloading aspect in that local area. Uh, I think there was one or trips, one or two trips that went up to Newport, a little more of a uh, infrastructure there, but at the same time, uh, it didn't last very long. The boats didn't want to run that far, so thank Thanks. you. And Madam Chair, may I add one final point on a, a related but different topic is all of these fish were anticipated and included in the stock assessment to have been taken. So whatever decision 
you choose to make, uh, the fish have already been accounted for. So it would be just an, an extra level of precaution from my perspective. Okay, so we're still working on questions on the panel's report. And uh, one thing I did want to ask is whether you guys discussed, you know, kind of this, what was, we had a little discussion with the uh, management team about how much is the rate, the catch rate going on now and, and how much could be expected. And there was quite a bit of variability. Uh, Lorna mentioned weather being one of the factors. Are there other factors that affect, you know, that sort of variable rate? That's you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Madam Chair. That's a tough one. Um, and that's why there's such a var variable amount in their CPS MT report. One thing is I don't think you could accommodate much more than about six or seven boats into that area um, unless they started running farther north or south to take to go to different ports. I think the biggest thing right now, you do have some good fishermen in that area right now. The Arctic Fox and, uh, is one and I'm familiar with and also the Emerald Sea. Uh, they're very good sardine fishermen. I do think that if the weather is good and... and Right now, based on four boats, they could average 200 tons a day, 250 without much effort. The Arctic Fox last year brought in three trips one day of 90 tons each. Uh, he's a good fisherman. So if the fish are right there, they're, they're going to get to them pretty quick. I think the bigger issue is unloading itself. Uh, and I'm not sure how much capacity there is to unload. I would guess maybe 200, 250 tons a day maximum right now. That could be changing, but most people that I've talked to know that there's a good possibility that this would shut down. It's not all that much fish, and just to run down there or run up there, whatever it is, would be pretty costly just to get there and find out you didn't have anything to catch. So I... That's not much of an answer, but I think that's kind of the worst-case scenario. Uh, if you're looking at our maximum catch scenario is about 250 a day, and I think it'll be less than that. But good weather and sardines cooperate, it could could be 250 a day. Thanks. Any other questions? Thank you. Okay, that's all of our advisory body uh, comments. And uh, again, thanks to all of them for hard work in a short period of time. Um, and that brings us to public comment. And we're going to start with Andrea Trace. Good morning, Madam Chair and members of the Council. My name is Andrea Treese, and I'm here representing Earth Justice. I just wanted to offer a few thoughts um, responding to some concerns that have been expressed about using the updated numbers um, to determine whether we're approaching overfishing or approaching an overfished condition um, and whether overfishing is occurring. Um, before I dive into that, I want to back up and echo the thanks that um, folks have expressed to all the work that's put into this issue. Um, I really appreciate the council taking up this issue and all the work that the committees have done in a very short time to look at it. Um, it is a big deal, I recognize. And obviously, we're in a tough situation. Um, now, I, you know, as, as far as... Um, how the the overfishing and overfished definitions should be looked at. Um, I think that you know the choice of how to look at those things is pretty squarely addressed in the Magnuson Act itself. Um, the Magnuson Act defines overfishing and overfished as a rate or level of fishing that jeopardizes the stock's ability to produce a maximum st sustainable yield over time. Um, and we've heard that based on the exploitation rate, um, we are already. Um, basically undergoing overfishing now, and that we, um, based on the best available science we have in the, in the revised stock assessment um, or the updates, that um, we are pretty likely approaching an overfished condition. So um, I think that we are, you know, we are definitely in the territory of needing um, some, some immediate action. Um, I would also... Um, emphasize that um, National Standard 1, uh, you know, 
emphasizes preventing overfishing and endo ending overfishing. It also requires uh, achieving optimum yield, which by definition um, is a reduction from MSY to, to account for ecological factors as well as eco economic factors. Um, I think it's fair to say that when we're fishing past MSY, we're definitely not achieving optimum yield. Um, the predator needs are not being met, as we've seen. Um, and also, I think, you know, we need to consider the effects of depleting our forage bases on other fisheries like the salmon fishery. Um, it's an important thing to, to keep in mind here. Um, you know, the Magnuson Act places uh, National Standard 1 as number one for a reason. Um, and the Ninth Circuit and the D.C. Circuit have both agreed that any management measure has to satisfy that ending overfishing, preventing overfishing, achieving optimum yield mandate um, before things like economic factors can be considered. Um, every, every management measure has to satisfy NS1 and has to, and of course all management measures have to be based on uh, best available science according to National Standard 2. Um, I'd also point out the, um, the Magnuson Act overfishing provisions and rebuilding provisions specify that any time um, overfishing is identified, um, and that, again, needs to be done based on best available science that, that some action is, is, is called for under the Act. Um, and I believe, you know, there's a really good reason for requiring these decisions in real time based on real conditions, based on currently available science. Um, and that's because, uh, you know, especially in a fishery like this where the stock goes up and down a lot anyway, um, if you don't act based on, pretty quickly, based on best available science, you can really um, risk some, some serious harm to the stock. Um, and this issue, I have to say, hits home for me, um, especially because it reminds me, actually, of my experience um, working on uh, salmon issues. Um, I spent several years of my life uh, fighting pretty hard to keep water in salmon streams. And one of the issue, um, issues that, that was always brought up by the Bureau of Reclamation and the water agencies was that they had a lot more water on paper um, than they did in the rivers. And they were allocating water based on what was on paper. Um, I don't think I have to explain to anybody in this room how harmful that approach has been for, for salmon fisheries. Um, managing based on paper water. Um, and eventually we did convince the Ninth Circuit that that was an arbitrary approach, fortunately. Um, but we're obviously still feeling the effects. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's one of the reasons I really wanted to encourage you all to, um, to look at what's going on in the water right now in terms of what's happening with the exploitation rate, how many fish are really there now um, wh when you're considering uh, whether or not to take urgent action rather than sort of defaulting to, you know, what was adopted last year or what the OFL number is in the FMP. I would really encourage you to just look at, look at the trends, look at what's happening in the water, and um, because I think that's really what's going to be best for the stock in the, in the long term as well as the ecosystem. Thanks. Thanks. Questions? Thanks, Andrea. Thank you. Jeff Shester. Good morning, Madam Chair. Members of the Council, I am not Jeff Shester. <laughs> yes. But <clears throat> if you don't mind, uh, I am Ben Entick-Knapp representing Oceana. And I'll be giving uh, testimony and using Jeff's PowerPoint that he had prepared and intended to give yesterday. So. Uh, uh, first of all, I want to uh, thank the Council for considering emergency action to close the directed fishery for the remainder of the season. Uh, second, I'd like to thank the Council for the action taken yesterday to close the directed sardine fishery for the 2015-2016 season, recognizing that the um, sardine population has collapsed 93% since 2007. The sardine population is now below cutoff and directed fishing is supposed to be zero when you're below that uh, cutoff threshold. And we're seeing uh, devastating and dire ecosystem consequences due to the lack of sardine, including starving sea lions. 70% of pups are expected to die this year due to starvation. Brown pelicans are abandoning their nests and starving as well. 
And we've also seen, based on the best available science, the stock assessment that this council just adopted, that overfishing coastwide has been occurring since 2010. And we know from scientific research that fishing amplifies the magnitude and frequency of collapses of forage fish like sardine. So we are requesting emergency action under MSA Section 305C to immediately close the directed fishery for Pacific sardine. The emergency actions, as Carrie introduced in the beginning of this, pertain to overfishing. And the criteria for ecological is preventing overfishing or to prevent other serious damage to the fishery resource or habitat. And we think both those situations apply here and that we meet all of the criteria. To addressing serious damage to the resource, I think the CPS FMP point of concern is useful to consider while you're not taking action under the point of concern framework. The criteria listed there apply to this situation where we've seen a significant change in recruitment, that there's been practically no recruitment in recent years. And this was not expected based on the modeling that has been informing the stock assessments in recent years, that an overfishing condition appears to be imminent or likely within two years. The SSC says we're approaching overfishing. We assert that we are overfishing right now according to the stock assessment. And we're seeing major changes in the availability of forage for dependent species, which is one of the goals of the FMP is to provide for adequate forage for dependent species. And we're seeing starving brown pelicans and sea lions. It's a constant reminder to the lack of sardine. And then finally, a major error in the data or stock assessment with last year's assessment failing to converge and overestimating the biomass by about 100,000 metric tons. We believe you should be using the best available science, which you adopted yesterday. That stock assessment shows that the 2014 biomass in July of 2014 was 150,334 metric tons, just barely above cutoff. So your annual catch limit using the CalCAFI EMSY would be only 36 metric tons under that approach. Current catches to date are 18,900, and this would be above both the retrospective OFL and ABC. Again, in our letters, we submitted under open public comment and the sardine action, and in our testimony yesterday, we show the graphs of exploitation rate being above EMSY, both at a coastwide and U.S. distribution. So as Andrea Treese presented the MSA definition of overfishing, that overfishing and overfish means a rate or level of fishing mortality that jeopardizes the capacity of fishery to produce maximum sustainable yield. And this is first and foremost in your responsibilities as managers to prevent overfishing under National Standard 1 and National Standard 2 to use the best available science. The CPS FMP also says, by definition, overfishing occurs in a fishery whenever fishing occurs over a period of one year or more at a rate that is high enough to jeopardize the capacity of the stock to produce MSY on a continuing basis. And it's the definition of overfishing is in terms of a fishing mortality or exploitation rate. This is in the FMP. And that says the council must take action to eliminate overfishing when it occurs and avoid overfishing when exploitation rates approach the overfishing level. You must take action. So the SSC changed the way that we calculate the MSY harvest rate. We now know that the maximum limits is EMSY based on the CalCAFI three-year average rather than the stochastic FMSY, constant FMSY of 18%. So this is using the best available science from the SSC in determining the fishing rate that produces maximum sustainable yield. And the SSC statement finds that the 2014-15 exploitation rate of 12.6% is greater than the EMSY rate of 12.2%. In my mind, there's no question mark here. This is overfishing. They called it approaching overfishing, but nevertheless, the council must take action to stop this. And the stock, in addition, is well below cutoff. You know what cutoff is. It's the lowest level at which you have a directed harvest, and the purpose is to protect the stock when it's at low biomass, and it's now below cutoff. 
And here is the 93% uh, decline that uh, the stock's experienced since 2007, and it's now below cutoff. Uh, there were some questions in the SSC statement about the projections that we did to determine uh, whether or not it's likely to be in an overfished condition within two years. The 33% uh, annual decline, which would is, is that top blue line in the projection, is basically just the natural mortality uh, with low, recruit, low to no recruitment um, and no fishing. So if, you're, if all fishing stops, including Mexico, and you just have natural mortality, you could be in an overfish condition. Adding the 50% and 75% decline is assuming that there will be some mortality, and that's obviously the case with the action that you set yesterday to have an annual catch level of 7,000 metric tons. We know there will be some U.S. mortality. There will also be uh, fishing in Mexico, and so we can safely assume that it will be greater than 33% annual decline and that you would see um, a continued decline in the stock with low recruitment. And a uh, linear decline is basically just, you know, would we decline just as much as we declined, the population declined this last year, um, which all head towards an overfished condition within two years. Ultimately, though, we don't think it's the SSC's job to do this. We think it's the agency's job to do this, to make this determination and do the modeling to find whether or not uh, this stock's projected to be overfished within two years. This is... Um, this is something that the agency should be doing and considering right now. Uh, so in, in, in summary, that there was major um, errors in the assessment. This has serious ecological impacts, on the water impacts, um, overfishing and, and lack of, of prey for dependent predators. Uh, this new stock assessment is the best available science that should be used in making the determinations, and that shows that last year's biomass level was just barely above cutoff of 150,335 metric tons. Overfishing is occurring under the MSI, MSA definition, fishing rates exceeding MSYs, uh, and, uh, and that the corrected harvest guideline, no matter how you do it, it's already been exceeded. Uh, finally, we think this is absolutely urgent on, on many levels, as I've said, from the lack of, of prey to the impacts that this will have on the sardine population um, and uh, fishing on a, a spawning population right now when we're having major concerns with recruitment, I, I think is a, a serious concern uh, to the long-term sustainability of this resource. So um, uh, we hope you'll move this forward, and uh, we appreciate your attention to this very serious issue. Thank you. Thanks. Questions for Ben? <coughs> Thanks, Ben. Thank you. Gilly Lance. <coughs> Good morning, Madam Chair and members of the Council. My name is Gilly Lyons with the Pew Charitable Trusts. Thanks very much for the opportunity to provide some brief comments uh, this morning on your consideration of scheduling emergency action for changes to the 2014-2015 Pacific Sardine Fishery. And first of all, I too would like to echo um, and express our appreciation and thanks for uh, to the Council and the advisory bodies for their consideration of this agenda item today, and especially to the CPSMT, the CPSAS, and the SSC for all of their work in a very short period of time over the last couple of days. Um, just briefly, we are in support of scheduling an agenda item later this week to consider changes to the current sardine fishery because of the determination that the stock is uh, is or may be approaching overfishing in the 2014-2015 season as a function of the estimated exploitation rate and also in light of new information provided in the 2015 updated stock assessment. Um, we feel that the Council's full consideration of a potential emergency action would be appropriate and very helpful at this time. We recognize that depending on uh, catch rates going forward, there could be a sort of a temporal disconnect situation where um, the bulk of or perhaps all of the remaining directed fishery um, could be caught prior to or around the same time as a federal emergency action taking effect. Um, however, we noted that state agency management action capability may provide some additional flexibility 
in this matter. And um, so it seems like there's some options for further discussion going forward. And um, thanks very much for your time and consideration today. And I'd be happy to take any questions that the council may have. Any questions for Gilly? Thanks, Gilly. Okay, I think it's time for our um, morning break. So let's uh, try to keep it to 10 minutes if we can and be back here at 9.30.